Patrick, when I was in your lab, which I thoroughly enjoyed last summer, uh, you talked about strong and weak free will, but not in a generic sense, a popular sense, but in a real scientific sense. I've been trying to remember what you said. I, I, I don't quite get it. Sure. We talk about people as being strong-willed or weak-willed, mm. but I'm, I've been interested in the strength of individual decisions. So if I choose to do something, can I do it really strongly or kind of just decide to do it? Do decisions come by degrees or are they a simple binary yes, no mm. kind of thing? So in our work, we've been using uh, electrodes on the scalp to decode individual intentions, individual decisions in a very simplified and reduced task where you need to decide whether to press a button with your left hand or press a button with your right hand. So not much hinges on that. It's and when you say decode, you mean you're able to predict prior to the decision based on the brain uh, physio electrophysiology. That's exactly right. So we can get an electrophysiological signal from the motor areas of the brain and we can predict with about 85% accuracy which of those two buttons the person is going to press during the one second before they press okay. it. So let me describe a little bit about exactly how this works and then I'll tell you how we've come to this measurement of strong and weak will, if you like. So we have in this task a little signal which will either tell you to use your left hand, it's a left pointing arrow that appears on a screen, or it's a right pointing arrow that tells you to use your right hand, or it's a double headed arrow which says it's up to you, left or right, you decide. You don't do anything yet. About a second later, there's a green go signal, which means now do it, okay? And the interesting question is the brain activity during that intervening one second, because what you can see is a buildup of electrical activity in the motor cortex of the hemisphere in the brain opposite to the hand that the person is going to use. So let's take the interesting case, which is the case where you freely decide, let's say, to use your left hand. Before you press the button with your left hand, you see an increase in activity over the right motor cortex because the brain is cross-wired. Right, right. And if the person freely decides to use their right hand, you see an increase in activity over the left motor cortex. And we, we can see that coming, all right? Now, the interesting finding is, if we tell the person, go left or go right, we can read a signal and we can, we can ascribe a strength to it. We can say, we can decode to a level of, let's say, 90 out of 100. We can interpret that as being with 90% accuracy, mm -hmm. that the person is indeed gonna press left or press right, which is fine because we told them to press left or press right. So in the forced choice condition, when we tell them what to do, our decoding is 90% accurate. The really interesting thing is that if we present a double-headed arrow and leave it up to the participant, whether they press left or press right, you never quite reach the same levels of decoding accuracy. Yeah. The signals in the brain are a little bit more ambiguous. You don't get to 90%, you get to about 80%. And there's a significant difference between the strength of the code when we tell the person what to do and the weaker code that exists when the person makes up their own mind. Mm. Now that's really interesting because as f in our view, that's a direct electrophysiological physiological measurement of how strongly the person holds to the decision which they will express at the end of this one second period in response to the go signal. And the finding is that when we make up our own minds, we don't really know quite as strongly as we might think we should. There always seems to be a little bit of doubt associated with the case of free will. <clears throat> It's quite interesting philosophically because there's a tendency to think that you know, free will is everything. And particularly in this sort of romantic uh, tradition, you think that free will is all about power, but maybe there isn't quite as much power there as we might think.